Okay, today we want to thank God for this opportunity to be able to uh, share this word today. I want just to uh, encourage you that you continue following us as we teach on what we feel the Lord is encouraging us to pursue this year. At the beginning of this year, uh, we felt that the Lord is calling us to move from barrenness to fruitfulness. And we, the last time I taught, we, I looked at Isaiah 54 and how through the covenants God established with Abraham, with Israel, and with Noah, the Lord released favor for Israel to be able to become a fruitful nation. And today we are going to look at a teaching from Jesus Christ, our Lord, from John 15. And the title for this message is, Abiding is the Key to Fruitfulness. So I want us to read the scripture and then we'll just go through and see what the Lord is calling us to be at this time. So John 15 says, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I've spoken to you. Remain in me and I'll remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourself to be my disciples. Verse 16, it says, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command, love each other. So we want to see, uh, let's just talk about the, uh, the vine tree. There are seven trees uh, that were special to the nation of Israel. One of them is the vine tree. And the vine tree and the fig tree always represented uh, the emotional health or the spiritual health of Israel. Whenever the trees, the vine tree and the fig tree were spoiled or destroyed, it represented the, the lowest point for Israel during their time. But whenever they were bearing fruit and people were enjoying the prosperity and the fruit from vines and fig trees, it represented the blessing of God in their lives. Israel was raised up as a nation. If you read Psalms 80, the Lord says, Israel is a vine he removed from Egypt and planted in the land. But because of sin, Israel failed to be able to fulfill her mandate to be a blessing to the nations. And that is until Jesus Christ came. So in John 15, Jesus says, I am the true vine. The Lord is comparing himself to Israel as a nation. Although Israel failed, the Father decided to send Jesus Christ as his son and gave him the symbolic choice of all the trees of Israel. This is the only tree the Lord Jesus confessed that symbolizes him, the vine. And the vine is uh, just like the fig tree. It's a tree that takes many years to grow. It has to be tended. It has to be cared of before it becomes fruitful. And we see in this passage when Jesus says, I am the true vine, he is um, repeating or acknowledging who he really is uh, before us. Because in the book of John, Jesus reveals himself, I am the light of the world, I am the good shepherd, I am the true vine. So there are these great I am's, which are seven of them in the book of John, which show that Jesus is fully God. Because the title for I am was the title that was given to God the Father. And Jesus is trying to declare that he is the true vine that has come to bear fruit. And in this passage, he says that He's the true vine and the father himself is the gardener. And the father is the one who does to work on the, the true vine to be fruitful. We all of us, if you are born again, you came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says what? You are a branch in the true vine. And Jesus declares this in uh, one of the verses. He says that uh, in verse 3, you are already clean. Because of the word I've spoken to you. Because you have accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. The Lord's word has cleansed you. You have been taken and be uh, grafted into the true vine to become a productive person. Now in this passage, I want us to look at three types of branches he mentions. 
that this represents believers. The first one is the fruitful branch in verse 2. It says, every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it that it may bear more fruit. When we start bearing fruit, the fruit of Christ-likeness, the fruit of good works that flow from the law that touch the lives of other people, the fruit of holiness and purity, the fruit of disciple-making, making ourselves reproducing our own kind by discipling people. The Father will come and do what? And prune us so that we become more fruitful. Now in this passage, it measures four stages of fruitfulness. It measures no fruit, fruit, more fruit, and much fruit. And those are the stages the Lord takes us through as we pursue him to be able to be a blessing to others. Now, as branches, we are not the source of the fruit. We just connect to the Lord and his fruit is able to flow through us. The life that the vine tree carries from the roots comes from the Father himself. So Jesus, connected to the Father uh, from eternity to eternity, comes to the earth and shares the clean word of the gospel to us. We turn to him and immediately we connect to the Lord himself. What happens? We start bearing fruit because his life is able to flow through our lives. And I believe that in this season, God is not just calling me or you as the body of Christ just to bear fruit. The Lord wants us to move on, to move to a stage where we can bear more fruit and much fruit. This is the season of multiplication. But the key to be able to multiply and bear much fruit, as we see in this passage, we have to learn to abide in the Lord. Abiding means we have to develop a deep, 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 close relationship with the Lord, a relationship that is based on intimacy. And Jesus defines it in this passage. He says that if you remain in me, you bear fruit. But you know, the way, this is how it works practically. When we believe in Jesus Christ, I want you to follow me carefully. The Lord comes to live within us. So he takes the initiative to graft us. He comes to live within us. And the Lord is calling you that you need to take initiative to stay in him. At that point, we come linked together and then his life can start flowing through us. He takes the initiative. We are those, the ones who take the initiative. The Lord takes initiative to connect us back to him through the gospel. But we have to make sure we commit ourselves to remain in him. And he says in verse 7, how do you remain in him? You have to make sure that his words abide in us. If you read John chapter 5, it adds other things. We must remain in his love. We must remain in his word. We must remain in a place of communion daily. So long as we stay connected to the Lord, we will always bear fruit. So the fruitful branch is the branch that stays connected to the Lord. But as you stay connected to the Lord to bear more fruit, to move from 30-fold, 60-fold to 100-fold to bear much fruit, the Lord has to prune us. I believe the church has been going for the last few years in a pruning season, uh, season where the Lord has been trying to work on us to move just from uh, having a casual relationship with the Lord to a committed relationship with the Lord so that he can use us in this season. I really believe what the Bible declares in uh, Isaiah 27 verse 6, that in this season, as we bear fruit, the fruit of the Lord through the church will fill the whole the earth. The Lord is determined to make sure that the church fills the whole earth with fruit in every people group, in every language group. And every believer is being called at this time to come to a place of intimacy and deep fellowship with the Lord. He has taken a step to come and dwell in us. We need to take a step to remain in him. We need to remain in his love, remain in his grace, remain in his word, remain in a place of prayer all the days of our life so that we can bear fruit according to our callings and the giftings he has given us. So that is the first branch. And uh, sometimes when you go through difficult situations, there's a tendency for us to feel that God does not love us. If we are in Christ, difficult situations is part of our pruning process. Uh, it's not a place that the Lord has abandoned us, but it's a place the Lord has brought us to stretch us. Many times we get comfortable. Many times you get comfortable. And as Christians, the only way we move out from comfort zone when we start to want to bear fruit, we have to become a people of faith. The Bible says without faith, 
we will never please God. When we become people of faith, the faith goals we have in our lives will manifest in goals. We stretch out for the Lord. If you have been, uh, let's say, touching a number of people in ministry, let's say five people, the Lord says, you know, I need you to increase to ten people. It may be teaching a new believers class, discipling people, training leaders, going for short-term missions. The Lord says, I want you to increase. But you notice when you start increasing to touch more people, you realize that the life of God, if it's not connected to him, what happens? You get drained, you get burned out. So, so long as the life of Christ is flowing through us as the true vine, we are in a place to continually able to touch other lives. And also we grow in holiness, we grow in grace, we grow in faith. We become people who become more like him over the years as we follow the Lord. And you find that if we don't do this, if we decide to be casual in this season with the Lord, the repercussions are not good. And Jesus says it in the word, in John 15. He says in verse 2, Every branch in me that bears no fruit will be taken away. So this is the second branch, the barren branch, the branch that does not want to bear fruit. And like I said, if you're not living a daily, devoted, deep, intimate fellowship with the Lord, you are literally dying. You're going to become a branch that the Lord will have no choice than to cut it off. If the fruitful branch represents the spiritual man, the barren branch represents what? The carnal man. You know, believers who don't want to live a, a spiritual life. Okay? They want to maintain the lowest common denominator with people. They want to conform to the world. If you're in that situation, you will not bear fruit. You have to reach a point to be prepared for the Lord himself to come and prune you with his knife. And it's going to be painful, but it's going to make sure that you become what? A fruitful Christian. Because the option of not becoming a fruitful Christian, if you're a carnal Christian, like in this season, what will the Lord do? He'll take you away. This is not a reference to eternal damnation, but rather a warning concerning being cut off from a deep relationship with the Lord. Now, if you look at the Bible, uh, if you do a, a study of the Bible, uh, it has all kinds of people who came to know the Lord. Some were casual in their relationship, some were committed, and some had a deep relationship. In, I like the analogy from Israel. Uh, when the tabernacle existed, uh, we had three kinds of workers or, in Israel that were appointed the Lord. We had the workers who worked in the temple, and then God create, called a greater group, the soldiers, who will go and fight, and then we have the worshippers. So you have to choose how far you want to walk with the Lord. If you commit yourself to walk with the Lord closely, the Bible promises that if you seek Him, we will find Him. The Lord will draw near to us. The Lord is calling us to live a casual lifestyle. We need to be committed, like Jesus says, to stay in His Word. And it's not just the written Word. We need to stay in the written word. We need to stay in Jesus Christ, the living word. We need to stay in the rhema, the revealed word of God that God speaks to us to guide us and to encourage us. We need to stay in it continually. At that point, we shall be able to bear much fruit. We need to allow the Lord to enjoy our fellowship daily. Otherwise, you'll be cut off. And then he says, the next branch is in verse 6. If a man abides not in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. So this is the withered branch, the branch that is not just barren, but now has died. A branch that has died, what does the Lord do? He will what? This is a, a branch that had a defect. It was not particularly secure in the Lord. So it started withering. Withering, for a branch to wither on a tree is a process. If you find a branch that has withered on a tree, it doesn't happen in a day. It's a slow process. And when a branch has been withered, you do not try to repair it. You take it out, you dry it, and you burn it. Now, this is what the Lord is saying. That if we do not choose to be fruitful branches and we start withering, what happens? The Lord, I mean, he'll cut you. Once the Lord cuts you from himself, then you have no life of your own. So this is like a warning to all of us that it's a horrifying uh, symbolism. I normally tell people some of these difficult scriptures, the Lord spoke it 
to encourage us that there is an opportunity. I want to encourage you, do not be passive or be full of lethargy when it comes to dealing with the Lord. Do not be casual with the Lord. The Lord is a person that has feelings and the Lord wants to engage us so that in this season we become fruitful. He doesn't want us to be barren, neither does he want us to wither off and be thrown out. But the reality of the matter is, John 15 is going to be fulfilled in this season. So I want to challenge you to evaluate yourself as a Christian. Where are you with the Lord? And if you choose to be what a fruitful Christian, what happens? In verse 8, he says, Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. And then he says also in John uh, 15, 16, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, that your fruit should remain. So the whole purpose of a vine that is fruitful is for God to be glorified. The Lord, the, the God the Father wants us to be glorified through Jesus Christ, the true vine. It brings so much pleasure and glory to God when we are a fruitful Christian. And he says in this passage, we are supposed to glorify him and enjoy him forever. I'm talking about productivity, our good works that come from the presence of the Lord, but also a fruit that reflect his character, his goodness, his grace, his mercy, his judgments, so that we become a living epistle that can fill the earth so that no one in these last days will have an excuse to say they don't know the Lord. The Lord is determined in this season to flow through the church. The Lord is bringing us to a, a season, John 15 teaches, a season of having a deep union with him. This deep union will lead to great fruitfulness. But another thing he says, it's not just the issue of being a disciple, a true disciple will always bear fruit because they are obedient. But another thing he says in John 15, 16, that you should go and bring forth fruit. And this one is talking about, about Christian apostleship. Every Christian is a saint person to your sphere of influence. So we have the uh, fivefold ministry, the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. The fivefold ministry was designed to produce according to their kind. So a good example Pastors teach us how to care for each other because they are called to shepherd the flock. Teachers teach us how to be grounded in God, Jesus Christ, the truth, and the true doctrines of God. Evangelists are supposed to teach us to reach out to the lost. They carry the passion for the Lord. Prophets, their primary ministry is not just to prophesy. Prophets are called to teach us how to hear God. The body has to hear God. Apostles are called to teach us how to go out. Apostles create structures that help people to go out. They are the sent ones of the Lord. So Christian apostleship is not just for the apostles. They are the equipers and trainers. But Jesus says here, once you have become fruitful, you need to go out and bear much fruit, and their fruit should remain. And your fruit can be through evangelism, discipling people, training leaders, equipping people in the areas God has called you in the marketplace, so that there is multiplication. Produce according to your own kind. There are at least 27 spiritual gifts in the Bible. All of them we are supposed to equip people like our own kind. So if you are called to hospitality, equip people in hospitality. If you are called to the, uh, the ministry of showing mercy, equip people who can show mercy. And not just spiritual gifts, maybe in the callings, maybe you are called to, to be an author. You have been a very successful author. The Lord is calling you to teach other people to be successful authors. Maybe you are a good public speaker. Take initiative, train others in the areas you have succeeded. That's what the Lord is saying. Go out and bear fruit. This is very important. Do not stay where you are. It is time to go out and bear fruit according to the kind that the Lord has invested in you. If you are called, let's say if you flow in this gift of wisdom or the spirit of wisdom, it's time to go out and teach people how to cooperate with the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, because the, everything the Lord has deposited in our lives, he demands fruit. And the fruit he's talking about is producing according to our own kind, according to the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus decided 
as the body. We are going to look at that in the future. As the body, not every part of the body can do the same thing. But he decided through the body, he can express his fullness. So for some people, Jesus will express mercy, showing mercy. For some people, uh, Romans 12, he shall express uh, being generous. For some people, he shall express evangelism. For some people, he express prophetic ministry. We are not called to be one tree. We are called to be all kinds of trees that the Lord wants us to fill the earth so that the earth will be filled with the fruit of the Lord through Jesus Christ. So I hope God has spoken to your heart. I want you to go seek the Lord. If you don't know your calling, what the Lord has called you. Number one, ask the Lord. Just ask the Lord, why am I here? Why was I born? And then start reaching out to disciple people in your area of calling and gifting. If you don't know, talk to prophetic people around you who know how to hear God. Most times they will tell you what you are called to do. And then start taking the first step. The first step you need to take uh, to be fruitful in this season, like I said, is not to run out and do those things. It's to abide. It's to stay in the Lord. So you come to a deep communion that the Lord can release his life through you. And then you can go out and do what he has told you in that place of communion. So God bless you. Uh, I pray that the Lord has blessed you. I want us to pray together. Lord, we just want to thank you that Jesus Christ is the true vine and that you have called us to be branches. He's the one who holds us so that the life of God will flow through us and bear fruit according to the callings and the giftings he has given us. Lord Jesus, help us to have a deep communion with you through the power of the Holy Spirit. Help us to know your nature. Help us to know your character. Help us to know your heart. Help us, may your mind become our mind in this season. Lord, we pray for a deep fellowship with you. Help us to take time to develop a deep fellowship with you in this season. So that, Lord, from that place of communion, we can do, go out and work the works of God and demonstrate your character to many others. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. God bless you. See you next time. Amen.